If you saw a Sega CD or Sega Mega CD on sale in the US or Europe during the early 90s, you likely saw it emblazoned with taglines such as comes with $300 worth of software, three discs included, or that it includes seven games, or eight games, or even nine games. Sounds like a pretty good deal, right? When you look closer, you realize that some of those games, four in the US initially, and five in the PAL and later American versions, were all games that you'd seen before. Sega Arcade Classics Collection, on the face of it, sounded promising. Just imagine a version of Golden Axe that was closer to the arcade. Super Monaco GP taking advantage of the Mega CD's sprite scrolling prowess. Enhanced versions of the other three games, two of which were, suspiciously, not arcade games. Was this collection something new Sega CD owners could be proud of? Or were they not worth the upgrade? Let's take a look. Sega Arcade Classics Collection was released alongside the Sega CD in the USA in November 1992. On the disc were four games, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Columns and Revenge of Shinobi. In April 1993, this version was also released in Japan, interestingly retaining the Streets of Rage and Revenge of Shinobi names, rather than adopting the Japanese names of Bare Knuckle and Super Shinobi respectively. That same month, the Mega CD launched in Europe and the collection was bundled with those consoles, though this time Super Monaco GP was added to the mix. This new 5-in-1 version was then re-released in America as a new version for Sega CD owners in a double pack that came with Echo the Dolphin CD. At face value, it looks like a collection of Mega Drive or Genesis titles, but they do have some enhancements, so let's take a look at each game and see what they are. First up on the menu is Golden Axe, Sega's seminal slash em up that got a port to the Mega Drive in 1989 and was, by all accounts, a very faithful conversion given the hardware. Choosing one of three warriors, you scroll left to right using your weapon and magic to defeat the endless hordes of Death Adder. As this is based on the Mega Drive version, you even get the extra stage at the end of the game, but it also has the graphical compromises that come with it. In terms of upgrades, you get the full arcade soundtrack in CD quality, played via Redbook Audio. Ow. It's a significant step up from the Mega Drive soundtrack in terms of quality, though the caveat it comes with is that the music doesn't loop correctly, with tracks having to reload before starting again. The voices have also been changed, they're not necessarily better, just re-recorded, new and clean. Ow, ow. Ow. The iconic digitized death screams from Rambo have been replaced with sounds that are more mundane by comparison. At least it's a feature match for the Mega Drive original. Oh wait, there's no two-player option? Hang on. Wait, still no two-player? That's right, bafflingly, Golden Axe on this collection is single player only, so you get better music, different voice samples and no two player mode. I'd say overall it's a net negative experience compared to the Sega Mega Drive port. Next up in the centre of the power menu is Streets of Rage. Loading it up, there's no real surprises. The music is excellent as usual, not enhanced, the same classic Yamaha instrumentation that we all know and love. You get the same opening, the same menu, but this time the two player mode is intact from the menu and from the press start prompt in the game. You start and everything is exactly the same until you hear the voices. Now I don't know about you, but the highly digitized and distorted screams in Streets of Rage are iconic. Replacing them with CD quality voice samples is fine, I guess if they were good samples, but they're really not. Some of them sound like someone's just kind of throwing up. Others sound like characters tripping over a rock rather than getting knocked out or throwing an attack. Overall, they're kind of weird and distracting. Now, don't get me wrong, some people may actually enjoy the cleaner sound samples, but for me, this is another net negative experience compared to the original. Columns is next. 
And what CD enhancements does this one sport? Well, you're looking at them, or rather, you're hearing them. That's it. This new title screen music happens to be the only other Redbook audio track recorded on these games in addition to the Golden Axe sounds. It's pretty cool, but it doesn't sound quite in line with the electronic Greek riffs in the original. This tune sounds a little bit more Arabic to me in its instrumentation. It would have been great if they made the whole game sound like that to mix things up, but as it stands, it does feel a little bit out of place. Aside from that, everything is the same. The same modes and options, two player modes included, allowing you to enjoy matching three jewels in this Tetris inspired puzzle game as you always have done. Match three or more, clear your board, game increases speed, and that's it. I've always liked Columns a lot, and while the music isn't perfect, it's nice enough to say that this is a small net positive upgrade on the Mega Drive and Genesis original. Now Revenge of Shinobi is a classic, there can be absolutely no doubt. It's a tough side-scrolling action game that requires you to learn the level layouts and essentially just get good, but it's insanely rewarding. What would you change about it? Well, given, like Streets of Rage, the instrumentation on the original 16-bit hardware by Yuzo Koshiro is phenomenal. Not that. The visuals are also pretty much as you were in the Mega Drive game. Sound effects, like the rest of this collection, are completely untouched. That leaves the voice samples, which, like every other game, have been re-recorded and now output in clear CD quality. They sound okay too, not as jarring as Streets of Rage or Golden Axe. However, there really isn't much speech at all in this game. The only time it's really noticeable is when you use your ninjutsu spells. And that's pretty much all there is to say about this version. An upgrade? Yes, but by the tiniest of tiny margins. The final game, present only in the PAL and later US releases, is Super Monaco Grand Prix. Originally an arcade game running on Sega's X-Board, this was a superscalar phenomenon in the arcade. Given this was added later, did Sega spend time adding scaling elements to the Mega Drive and Genesis port's comparatively barren courses? Uh, no. Once again, this is exactly the same game as the original 16-bit port. Now, that's not necessarily a terrible thing. The arcade version was light on content, whereas this F1 racing experience was fully fleshed out on console with a replication of a full Formula 1 season. But even then, passwords are required to save your progress. That in itself is infuriating. They could have at least tweaked the code just a bit to use the internal save function of the Mega CD. It's not all as you were though. The speech has been significantly cleaned up and is so much clearer when you're actually racing. But even then, the sound effects are jarring and the Mega Drive sound channel restrictions are still very noticeable when they really shouldn't be. Once again, this is a very minor upgrade based on the voice quality alone. But of all the games on this compilation, this is the game that had the most potential and ultimately is the one that is the most disappointing. So overall, is this worth the upgrade? I think you know the answer to that. Free games can boast minor but not significant upgrades in quality, and you may miss them if you're not paying attention. Golden Axe without its two-player mode is objectively worse, and I'd say that Streets of Rage's voice samples distract from the atmosphere of the original. That said, with its CD soundtrack, Golden Axe is arguably a slightly better experience on Sega Mega CD for solo players, and if you've got no one to play with, I suppose it's worth your time to a degree. Additionally, Arcade Classics is a somewhat misleading title given that only three of the games on this compilation actually originate from the arcade, and even then these are the Mega Drive ports, not the arcade originals or even new ports for the Sega Mega CD hardware. If you got this compilation in 1992 and didn't own these games previously, I don't think you'd have much to complain about. But if you had played these games, and chances are, if you're a Mega Drive fan or a Sega fan and you had £300 to drop on the add-on, you probably had played them. And then at that point, this compilation does feel like a bit of a con. Hey, why did I make this video? Well, this compilation has always interested me, and to be honest, I do actually quite enjoy the versions that are on there. But this is me who got the add-on and the game cheap many years after release and before retro game prices went absolutely insane. 
looked at objectively for its time, it's interesting to discuss how this compilation would have been viewed. You also have to consider other expensive mid-gen upgrades entering the market in the modern day. And when you see the absolutely ludicrous prices being demanded for what are minor upgrades on old games which essentially play exactly the same, then I think the conversation around this particular set of titles becomes more relevant than ever. At least, that's my opinion. But what is your opinion? We'd love to hear your thoughts on this collection. Let us know in the comments below or on the Sega Guys Discord. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a like and a subscribe and hit that bell for notifications to stay on top of all future Sega Guys content, including our fortnightly podcast. And if you want to be extra mega, think about becoming a member with a bunch of awesome perks from as little as just 99p. But irrespective of any of that, thank you so much for stopping by and staying with us today. And until next time, we will see you on the Sega side. Thank you.